Imagine we have a knapsack with a weight capacity of nine kilograms. We also have a set of items, each with a specific weight and profit. Our goal is to select items in a way that maximizes the total profit while ensuring that the total weight does not exceed the knapsack's capacity. The term 01 in this problem means that we can either take an item completely or leave it entirely. We cannot take fractions of an item. This is different from the fractional knapsack problem where we are allowed to take a portion of an item. I have already made a video on fractional knapsack. You can check it out. The link is in the description. A simple way to solve this problem is by using brute force. We start by either selecting the first item or skipping it. Then we repeat this process for the second item and so on until we reach the last item. This approach explores all possible combinations, which leads to an exponential time complexity. Because of this, it is highly inefficient and impractical for large inputs. Now, let's see how we can optimize this problem using the dynamic programming approach to make it more efficient. In this example, we have five items, each with a specific weight and profit. For ease of animation, let's set the knapsack capacity to seven. We will use the bottom-up approach to solve this problem. If you're not familiar with this approach, I recommend watching the video on Introduction to Dynamic Programming first. You can find the link in the description. First, we'll create a table where columns represent the weight capacities of the knapsack, rows represent the available items. Each entry in the table stores the maximum total profit achievable for a given capacity and the items considered so far. The first row and the first column represent the case where no items are available, so their values are set to zero. Now, let's start filling the table row by row, beginning with the first item. This item has a weight of three and a profit of 50. Looking at the first column where the capacity is one, the item's weight is three, which exceeds this capacity. So we cannot place it in the knapsack and we set the value to zero. Moving to the next column where the capacity is two, Again, the item's weight is greater than the capacity, so we set the value to zero. Now for capacity three. Since the item's weight matches the capacity, we can store it. The profit for this item is 50. Since there are no previous items, we compare it with the value just above, which is zero, and take the maximum. So we update this cell to 50. For all remaining columns in this row, there are still no other items to consider. So we simply carry forward this value, which is 50. Thus, this row represents the case where only the first item is available. Now, moving to the second item, which has a weight of two and a profit of 40, we'll start filling the corresponding row. In the first column, the capacity is one. Since this is less than the item's weight, we cannot place it in the knapsack, so we set the value to zero. Next, we move to the column where the capacity is two. This can hold the current item. Comparing the current profit with the value above, we see that the current profit is 40, which is greater than zero. So we update this cell to 40 and move to the next one. Now the capacity is three. The current item's weight is two with a profit of 40. However, the previous row already has a profit of 50, which is higher. So we keep the value as 50 and move to the next column. The capacity is now four. The value from the row above is still 50, so we keep it at 50 as well. Now the next column has a capacity of five. This one is interesting because it can hold both item one and item two. Together, they give a total profit of 90, which is greater than the value from the row above. So we update this cell to 90. For all the remaining columns, we simply carry forward this value as 90 is the best profit we can achieve so far. Now, moving on to the next item. It has a weight of four and a profit of 70. So we start filling this row. For columns with capacities up to three, we simply copy the values from the row above since the knapsack cannot hold this item yet. Now for the column where the capacity is four, we compare the current profit, which is 70, with the profit from the row above, which is 50. Since 70 is greater, we update this cell to 70. Next, we move to the column with a capacity of five. The current profit remains 70 because we cannot add anything else. This item alone weighs four. However, the profit from the row above is 90 since it can hold both item one and item two, whereas the current row can only hold item three. So we update this cell to 90. 
Now, for the column where the capacity is 6, this can hold both item 2 and item 3, giving a combined profit of 110. Since this is greater than the previous 90, we update the cell to 110. Next, for the column with a capacity of 7, we can include item 3 and item 1. Together, they give a total profit of 120, which is higher than the previous value of 110 and certainly greater than the above value of 90. So, we update this cell to 120. Now we move on to the next item. The algorithm will similarly check whether the current profit is greater than the previous ones and update the cells accordingly. I will pause the voiceover until the algorithm finishes. Once the table is generated, the last element represents the maximum profit value. In this case, it is 120. Now that we have found the maximum profit value, another problem is to determine which items were added to the knapsack using this table. This is very easy to find. We start by checking the element just above the last element. Here, the last element is 120, and the value above it is also 120. Since the value remains unchanged, this indicates that the current item is not making a difference. So, this item is not included in the knapsack. We continue checking the previous item. Again, the value above is the same, meaning this item is also not included. Next, we find an element where the value above is different. Here, the value above is 90, which means the current item is making a difference. This tells us that item 3 is present in the knapsack. Since this item has a profit of 70, it contributes 70 to the total profit. Now, subtracting 70 from 120 gives 50. We then look for 50 in the above row and continue performing the same steps to determine the remaining items. Here, the value in the cell above is also 50, which means the current item is not included in the knapsack. So, we move to the next item above. Now the value in the above cell is 0. This means the current item is making a difference and is included in the knapsack. So finally, we conclude that item 3 and item 1 are included in the knapsack. Now, the table contains n rows and w columns, and we need to traverse this table once. So both the time and space complexity here is big O of w times n. Check the GitHub link in the description to get the Python code for this problem.